the town's jurisdiction and be it further resolved that the town board does hereby adopt the town of Scholar Falls abbreviated consolidated plan, the citizen participation plan and the residential anti-displacement plan for the purposes of administering the proposed town of Scholar Falls housing rehabilitation program and be it therefore resolved that a copy of the abbreviated consolidated plan citizen uh, participation plan and anti-displacement plan be retained at the town's office by the town clerk of the town of Scarlet Falls and be it further resolved that the town board, excuse me, that the town supervisor is hereby authorized to sign and execute all associated documentation for the aforementioned New York State Program Office of Community Renewal CDBG application and be it therefore resolved that a certified copy of this resolution be included in the 2002, excuse me, 2022 New York State Office of Community Renewal Community Development Block Grant application. Um, can I get a motion? Motion. By Mr. Newman. Second. By Mr. Facto. Any discussion? All right, roll call. Mr. Newton? Yes. Mr. Parati? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Facto? Yes. Mr. Randall? Yes. This may be a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It is, but I'll help you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. Now, I think we got a couple of those last yep. time missions worked out, so but there's a ton of paperwork with us. Okay. We'll help the community. Um, Town of Scarlet Falls, regular meeting, July 19, 2022, Resolution 2265. A motion by, be it resolved, that the town board of the Town of Scarlet Falls approves the following general fund budget transfers from a point one nine nine zero point four zero zero contingent nine hundred fifty dollars to a point three five one zero point four zero zero control of dogs uh, mm -hmm. con what's that one? Contractual, contractual, contractual expansion. Yeah. So that one's uh nine nine hundred fifty. This is due to a uh, stray animal you know, we just picked up a, about a fourteen hundred dollar plus bill on so we had to move some money around to take care of the vet bills on that so uh, it is now in a home of a rehabilitation person that is not charging us anything so uh, yeah the good outcome is the dog has a good outcome now so uh, can I get a motion move mm -hmm. and seconded by Mr. Bruno I guess if there's no discussion, roll call. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Mr. Parati? Yes. Mr. Facto? Yes. Mr. Randall? Yes. Oh, smoke. Does it for resolution. All right, claims. Um, general fund thirty three thousand eight hundred and fifteen dollars and ninety three cents. Highway eight thousand nine hundred and sixteen dollars and twenty eight cents. I only three thousand one hundred and thirty two dollars and twenty five cents. Um, Woods Mills Water two thousand four hundred and forty eight dollars and eighty cents. Morrisonville Water eleven thousand two hundred eighty nine dollars and ninety one cents. Macy Lane Water six hundred and seventy four dollars and nineteen cents out of only uh claim numbers two zero two two zero zero eight 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 through two zero two two zero zero nine zero one claims only uh two zero two two zero zero nine one six through two zero two two zero zero nine seven zero and payroll claims Two zero two two zero zero eight eight one through two zero two two zero zero eight eight seven and also two zero two two zero zero nine zero two through two zero two two zero zero nine one five. So can I get a motion to pay the claims? Motion. 
Mike. 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 All right, Perotti. so we'll give it to Mike and then Mr. Newton. So, Mr. Parati, second in on Mr. Newton. Roll call. Mr. Parati. Yes. Mr. Newton. Yes. Mr. Bruno. Yes. Mr. Factor. Yes. Mr. Randall. Yes. All right. That concludes all the major business. Um, I'll bring the public forum before we end the meeting. Well, the guy does is anybody else? You want to say anything? I got a question. Yeah. <laughs> any of these houses you're talking about that are derelict houses in the town and stuff, are any of them salvageable? That's a, another another whole process. I went through and after talking to you and getting the information for Bill uh, LeCount, he also spoke with um, with Davies, Kimberly Davies, and uh, we now have a clear set of boxes. You do this, you do this, you do this, you do this, and then this happens. Well, we didn't have that before, okay? So, if it is a house that is in need of, of say, demolishment and, and removal, there is, uh, basically the big difference is that you would have to put three bids out on the process of what that's going to cost to remove them and, and get rid of the debris. If it is a um, house that's in disrepair or a, the lawn is in 18 inches high and there's you know rodents in it, that we can automatically, the next closest, quickest person that we can get to and it doesn't have to go out to bed. But if we are going to demolish something and get rid of it, like there are a couple that are that way, um, that's going to be a little bit longer process. It does come to this board. It doesn't have to go to uh, the justice. Um, and that well, what I'm really wondering, can you use any of that grant money she's talking about to demolish these houses? And that, uh, no. There so is that, a... Yeah. Well, Our, you want to answer it? There I, is a... I was going to say, there, there's a separate... I mean, we do replacement it, programs yeah. as well, but our, this program is specifically to bring homes up to code and standards for people to live in. Um, accessibility, you know, if someone needs a bathroom that they can't get in, you know, it's it's to bring homes up yeah. to code for people to stay in their like homes. A, they, they're now wheelchair yeah, now exactly. and, they, and they need, and they need uh, a, ramp, you know, a, ramp a ramp or something and a wider door entrance and an automatic opener. Yeah. It could be they need a roof and they can't afford it. You know, mm -hmm. this helps moderate to low income. Uh, this is going to help some of those houses yes. that maybe are in disrepair. That's what I'm that looking we for. Could, yes. We could do that. Yes. Our, Can, our goal is to bring those homes you back know, to back, Yes. But livable, livable spaces. You know. Do you or the town reach out to these people and? So what we what we're doing right now is we're getting approval from the town to do the application. And so what we've already done is sent postcards to, so we pull up a, a the tax map, pull up the income of, of the individuals. We send postcards to the town of Schuyler Falls. Um, basically, if they fall in those lines, they get a postcard stating that the town is hopefully going to be applying for this grant. Um, and then, you know, as long as we hopefully can get the funding, um, it's all they call, do an intake with us, and then they're kept on the list. So um, once we get funding, hopefully, um, then we go through those lists, do the intake process, and then it all comes. So it is technically the town of Schuyler Falls money. Um, so Friends of the North Country, which is where I'm from, administers that money. So basically we do all the legwork. We come to the town, ask them if they want to approve the project that we're bringing forward. Um, and then we go forward with the project as long as it's approved. Uh, I'm glad you reach out to them. <laughs> they're ready to pay them. Yes, exactly. Oh, no. But no. I, I'm glad somebody reaches out to them because yes, they yep. probably don't have we internet, do outreach, computers, yeah. and stuff exactly. like that. Exactly. This got brought up because they, they already had a waiting list. So yes, of 11. we did already. Yeah. We had a few, so our hope is to get more with those closer. It was 11 when mm -hmm. I first started yes. this. Yep. And it has been about two years since we did one of these did the last one and he can tell you how much they work how much leg work they <laughs> there's a, there's a lot the, the <laughs> there's a lot are crazy i know what it I just keeps getting worse the <laughs> they're, 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 they're more they should have already went up yes so uh wasn't it around two hundred and something thousand, two hundred and four thousand we're applying for? It's, it's going to be two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty thousand. 
Yep, which is, 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 is a half of a grant. Yeah. So if, you know, the larger numbers that we have in towns, the more money we can apply for. Yep. So even if people come and we, you know, utilize all of our funding of the 250000 the next time there's a grant application, we apply. can bring it forward. And keep me burying paper. <laughs> <laughs> I try to do it for you, just need your signature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. so ending up, finish up that uh, end audit with you guys um, and what we had to do with yes. Albany. Yes. Um, of course, Melissa's not there anymore. I look forward to working with you. Yes, but, uh, yes. She retires she, next she Tuesday, was, so she's, <laughs> she's, she was um, awesome. she's amazing. Um, she left some big shoes to fill. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, um, yeah, we, we went over a couple things that I'm pretty familiar with it just from what Rick did there. Um, and it's a good opportunity for the people yes. in the mm -hmm. community that couldn't afford it to get Things. Yeah. So that's a good question. Yes, it is. Yeah. There is a separate one on uh, revitalization, mm -hmm. storefront. There's restored, yeah. You know, or, or even what you're saying, demolishing old buildings so that new things mm -hmm. can be built there. That's a, that's a separate one. It, it's still through a real it's, it's still through the yeah. um, Office of Community Renewal yeah. System. Yeah. But it's uh, be a separate, a separate grant. Yeah. yeah. And they just. They just dumped a ton of money in that mm -hmm. one. They did just dump a ton. I yep. just looked at that the other day. But there's only so much, how many hours in my day? <laughs> Yours and mine too. <laughs> I do have a question on Absolutely. that though. Um, so you send these postcards out. Yes. And let's say um, this is one of the locations. Mm -hmm. As the owner, I don't respond to you. Okay. So that means that I'm not asking you to step in and do work for us. The town cannot step in and say, "Please put this location on." It's got to be the. It's got to be the owner. Yeah, because it's not then we could say, basically they're going to oh, be getting a lien on their property. On property. But now that the property I have, owner's got to request it. Yeah. But now that I, we have the proper steps to take from the yeah. county on right. the adverse side of that, mm -hmm. that could give somebody a little shove. To, a little push. And, and yeah. I will tell you this: I, ain't gonna, I will not mention any names, but there is a poor lady that. Um, refused you guys help last time who called here begging to get the help now and it's it's very hard and humbling for those people to try to accept because they're prideful and what they what we, they do very well is they try to explain to them that you know it nobody will know it's very confidential. The only ones that I'll probably ever see the full names of the project, I won't see all of them, mm -hmm. but I have to, that was one of the things that we had to, yes. <laughs> I have to go up yes. and just do a verified check on a couple folders. So because of my position, I will end up seeing a couple names because I have to verify that that actually work that we paid mm -hmm. for, they paid for, asked us to pay for as part of the program, actually got done. Yeah. And that's part of the audit process that the state yeah no needs. no names will ever be brought forward but, uh, it's and we use project numbers right. so that no names are it's are kind of like when i did the income study for the water district Every, everybody was a number and mm -hmm. the only one that actually could ever put the number with the name was blood test third who actually mm -hmm. did the study we never got that we didn't know that we wanted all we needed was the information to be able to pay to petition to mm -hmm. get in for the CDBG grant and the USDA yeah. RD grant because they're low to moderate yeah. income grants so you have to hit that that sure. thing mm -hmm. which I'm not sure we'll ever be able to do again <laughs> yeah. as, as salaries have increased dramatically but we we encourage year. anyone to just call and apply I mean you know there are certain types of incomes that we don't include um so people could income qualified you know, dependent. So we just always encourage people to call. So if you know anybody, have them call, do an intake. It's, you know, very beneficial to them yeah, in the long run. Yeah, it is completely confident. It is, yes. Do you have any contact information? Uh, I can give you my name and, and phone number, absolutely. Okay, I didn't bring any business cards, but I can definitely give that to you. All right. Yeah. Now, if we get uh, a parcel that, say, ends up having to be flattened, whatever, that would probably end up, like, on the tax uh sales or something could we do a thing like reach out to like habitats of humanity and rather having sold 
work it that way to see that somebody gets a house built back on it and it goes back on the tax rolls that way. Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, they're not a, a government thing, but you know. Right. Unfortunately, about two years ago, just before I took office, we could do that locally. Now everything, I don't want to get into a four hour discussion, but basically when they, when Kimberly Davis started that, Land the name like that, the, uh, Land Bank. Land Bank. Land Bank Trust, thank you. Uh, they petitioned to have the counties take all um, levies. And that's the way it stands. Even though the Land Bank Trust never went through, guess what? We got stuck with that part of it that was setting up for the Land Bank Trust. So now everything has to go through. It all goes in their pocket now. Well, they get the county gets their money before we go through that one. And then we'll get whatever's left over. Uh, if we do it by their numbers that I just got in the boxes that we checked, and they have to approve it in order for you to get your reimbursement for what you're doing. Because right down to if we have to bid to, to demolish a place, they have to approve that too. Because ultimately, they have to make the town hall. So they want to make sure that the bid is within reason and the whole I don't mean to put too much bad light on that process, but it, 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 it took us out of the game. Everything gets levied at the county level now. Even we, we Donna sometimes, you know, is the one that will send down for, for me because I'm one of those guys that don't pay my water bill until my taxes because I can claim on my tax, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I pay all mine at the end of the year. So mine gets levied on my taxes rather than paying my quarterly $65, I pay it all at once at the end of the year. So, yeah, that's the way that goes. Is there a local chapter of Habitat for Humanity around here? I, I, don't, I, don't, I think there's one yep. like the whole I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but it's about the water, the water district yet. Mm. That's it. So, in regards to Resolution 2257, I believe it was, that was passed on June 28th. Um, I believe the importance of that resolution that was stated by you, that the Burge Group was communicating to the town that the project, the ball needed to get rolling, or we were at risk of losing funding. Is that correct? You are uh, on okay. a mark. Okay, so with that being said, um, with us waiting by tabling Mr. Facto's resolutions tonight, does that impact, does that weight impact anything? Is this, is this weight going to impact the project? Everything we delay at this point impacts the project. Unfortunately, the petition that came to the, the town had to be reviewed by legal counsel. And when sure. I went to our, our town attorney, he suggested that we go to an attorney that does that because a little bit out of his preview. Um, not that he couldn't have brought himself up to speed, but being that we were trying to get this answered as fast as we can, and it's been over a week and a half now, two weeks probably, and and somebody's very capable hands, and he's not, it's not his fault, it's our fault. I'm I'm looking for paperwork and trying to get him what he's asking for to make sure all our keys are crossed and our eyes dotted and all. So I guess to answer your question is exactly. The, the informational meeting was to bring everybody up to speed to where we were at this point with the funding we had. Right. January 1st, when I signed the acceptance of the grant money and the bond, and we had an agreement between us and these other two entities, I could have started spending that money on my own because the resolutions were all passed, so the supervisor had the right to do that. I could have, without even going to you or the board or the people, and started spending that money and, and went forward with this project. The only thing that I was waiting on was the rest of the funding, but we're six months into 24 months of our lifespan, and I had to tell the people that if we continue to wait without moving forward with the process and applying for the extra grant, that we, the extra WIA grant again this year, right. and we're gonna, we already moved forward with the congressional funding. We now have the chance, because it just opened up for the federal paid infrastructure bill, 
um, we should get the ERR done so that this project could stay on on timeline to reasonably get done within that 24 month period and that's what that that's what I wanted the people of this water district to understand it's their district that if you want to take the chance to continue to wait which I have no problem with we may lose the 8.1 million dollars that we have guaranteed right now so can i ask a qu another yeah. question i guess so the board is waiting on a determination from the lawyer which you're expecting any time is correct. that correct correct at that time uh I, I hate to speak in hypotheticals but hypothetically speaking say the lawyer says no i don't think it's in the best interest of the town to hold a vote at any time further can the town re-look at that issue because um, it sounds like obviously there's more money hanging in the air still through the WEA grant, uh, maybe other grants out there. So I think what people are, people are, I don't think are upset about the magnitude of the project. People are upset about the bond amount that's being taken out. That's what they want to vote on. Mm -hmm. They want to vote on the, essentially the mortgage that's paying for this water district. Right. Which we don't know the answer to what that amount's going to be yet. No. All I can tell you is I had to fund it to make it viable as a project for what I didn't have in grant money. Not that we're still not going after that grant money. And that ended up to be five and a half million dollars. We got it locked in at 1.75. Correct. You'll never see that in your lifetime again. I shouldn't say never, that's a bad word, but I'm almost gonna say you will never see anything locked in or that kind of money for 38 years at one, you, that's like giving you the money and saying here, 1.75 is a federal secure bank. But, um, but that way that the project was was feasible to move forward with. And we could still, we could still go through with funding till the end of the project. Right. So right up until the, 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 the last cap is on that pipe, we can still continue to search and get funding. So say the fall, say fall comes along You've applied for all these grants. I guess again, again, hypothetically speaking, but that's all you can speak now is in hypotheticals because you don't have crystal ball. No. Hypothetically speaking, we get to the fall. No grant, no other grant money is approved. We're bonding five and a half million. At that point, has a shovel hit the ground? Are we able to stop this project, or or, or are we already in it by? The, are you already envisioning the town doing work by the you know by the fall? Because you're saying that what well, Berger Group was telling us, we got to get the shovel in the ground now. But essentially, we won't know for four or five months whether we have more grant money coming into this project. Right. Well, you're asking, you're, you're mixing a lot of stuff together there. But we would we would put we're hopeful that we could put the project out for bid. About like I, I just told you on the, the, the garage project, somewhere or you have to do it between February and March. If you don't put this project out to bid by then, then you're going to miss the. The big contractors that would have be able to do that 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 work, they already have jobs lined up. So you're saying that this project wouldn't even be bidded until earlier winter next right year. Right now, because we I waited that six month period, that's what I was. That's what the information will mean was. So the not. town will know I, by I that time how much as a supervisor money. as long as I'm comfortable with waiting, without giving the information to the water district to allow them to know what the pros and the cons were. The, 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 the con would be that we could lose everything if we wait any longer. That's still a decision that I would like clarification from everybody in the Marshall Water District I, as to what their bottom line is. You know what I'm saying? Like if sure. I ask you what's your bottom line? What's the, what's the most money that you would be willing to spend a year on a bond? You know what I'm saying? Sure. Is it three hundred dollars a year? Is it uh, two hundred fifty dollars a year? Is it one hundred seventy-five dollars a year? Right now, it's at five hundred seventy-five dollars a year. Correct. Okay. So the 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 resident has to figure out. The resident water user has to figure out and tell me what's the max I'm willing to pay to upgrade and fix the water because in twenty. 23 our water district is going to be 70 years old its life expectancy was 50 to 75 years so it's either outlived if it's 50 years 
75, it will have outlived it in five more years, no matter how you look at it. And I'm only one, you know, like I said, in yeah. the workshop too, I'm only one user in this district. Myself, personally, my bottom line would be about half of what the town's looking at right now at the full so 75. So your, you your, 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 your top dollar would be 200 and say $65. Yeah, I think asking residents to pay $20 seven, a month is reasonable, but $50 a month may not be. Uh, the other problem with the bottom line number, not that I don't disagree with you, but the bottom line number is going to be very subjective because where I am in River Street, of course I'm going to be willing to pay 20 30 I probably may even pay $50 extra, which is what's being proposed now, to get the water where it needs to be. However, if I lived in River Street Heights, they're not getting anything out of this project besides having to pay the extra money every year. They're not getting anything new on their line, so their bottom dollar might be, I don't want to pay anything extra. So why wouldn't they be getting anything new? Well, what, what would be replaced on those? Like River Street Heights, all, for all, instance. All the main going to their, their line would be all brand new. It's still part of the whole okay. system. In other words, we all get off of the, it comes across the bridge here, but if it don't come across the bridge, because that line's bad, then River Street Heights is not going to get any water. Fair, fair. That's a fair point. So but I, the, everybody, and that's not my rule. The lines okay. coming down River Street Heights would not right, be. Right, all the way to it. Um, again, that's not my rule. Right. That's New York State that comes out with special water districts and what users have to pay that are in that boundary line. Right. Whether they want to do it or not, we're obligated to have them pay it and, and they're obligated to pay that in their taxes by by law. That's just the way it is. I can't I can't pick and choose in a water district they you don't have to pay for this up, up I understand that. I get that. Because sure. it, it didn't necessarily if the water main breaks on twenty two B or on Mason Street, it still affects the water coming to your house or at River Street Heights. Or not, if they don't get it. Well, and how would that play into the sand road project that the county's going to have to take over? Aren't they going to be getting bringing up a, a whole, the same whole project? That there's too many preliminaries on that. Um, we've had some discussions. Uh, I don't feel like I'm at liberty that we're that far into it to discuss. But it, it's a fair assumption as a town resident to say that those people on the sand road would be getting water from the same main, unless you're bypassing and, around and, the town. And there's been a, a whole bunch of. Mm -hmm. You know, discussions between me and Mike Zerlo and Rick Boddicker and Ryan Davies and I could go on and on and on over the last week because I'm not working on one thing. I'm working on 55 things, sure, sure. okay? And some of them tie into the bigger projects, some are little. But, uh, yeah, I'm down here eight hours a day. Well, if you're saying Look that, you know, the project's not going to get bid out to early winter, then obviously by then we'll have a better understanding of how much money is being allocated towards this project through grants and how much is going to be on the responsibility it, of the tax it, You're 100% right on that. And I just wanted okay. to make sure that they understand that if we wait and we don't move forward the things that need to happen right now, that the, the whole thing could fall apart even with the new granting if we can't complete the project within the 24 months i don't make that rule it's just yeah. cdbg and show yeah show and you know and you know yeah. he's yeah. right already. about yeah. that and I, I, by that time we can get an idea if the people get an opportunity to vote or not on it right that, that's going to be subject to the tool to be short like i said it, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff in this and that's why I told you that the other night even at the work session I can't just tell you that you are able to vote on it. I mean I'm pretty sure when you left that night you thought that the county could set up the vote I never thought the county could set up but I thought that would be the responsibility of the town clerk you know usually it would be the responsibility but the you know clerk. when I called you the two couple days later and mm -hmm. You know, you were like, uh, we don't have the records of the water That's district, correct. so the yep. town, the, the, the Clinton County vote, um, Board of Elections yeah, can't even hold, hold that. You yeah. would have to do it separately. And I, Jody was amazing. She spoke to me for almost <coughs> sure. an hour and a half on how we could possibly do the vote or even by okay. by letter, you know, doing it by proxy. Which, which is what right. I recommend. But uh, I got to know legally if I can even forward that. Sure. If this board, and I said it, and I told you that the other day on the phone, 
when we did the bond resolution and we did the CDBG grants and we were talking all that and, and Mr. Dona questioned me a million times on things that I couldn't answer in a month. I said, if this project is gonna cost more feasibly than I feel that the resident can handle, then it'll be done. But I, I, I'm not there yet. I don't, oh, my balls are still up in the air. I'm saying that word, but, you know, but uh, I got too many things up the in the air. The last thing I guess I would have to add to it then is if, Apologize. if the lawyer comes back and says that a I'm still juggling. is allowed. Yeah. <laughs> If the lawyer comes back and says the public vote's allowed, uh, it wouldn't be feasible to have that vote until early next year because you don't know, the voters want to be known what they're even voting there, on. There may, so not, the bond is. there may not by law be an opportunity to even hold a vote, but what sure. I would definitely do is make sure that we put something out, even, like I said, even if it was in our letter or on the internet or on our website saying this is what it is, this is what the final cost is, we didn't get this, we didn't get this, hey, we might have got this. We might have lost this grant by now. I don't know. I, uh, I don't have that crystal ball. But uh, I'm hoping by November that we will know on a congressional funding, which is uh, 2560000 in its own, uh, because you know as well as I do, they have to do their budget for 2023, yeah. just like sure. we do when we're starting. So I'm gonna know, even though I might have not the paperwork in front of me, there's gonna be a, a pay bill and a, and a line item for that. And they're gonna, they're gonna tell me whether or not we got that funding. And that's gonna be a big difference in the cost of what this project is. Is that one thing? Right. But I don't have a crystal ball. Well, I appreciate the explanation. I think there's, it's a little clearer now than it was yeah. for most people. And I think that, you know, at the end of the day, as long as there's not something being railroaded uh, right. to the district, then most people no, are not going to Like I said, but 100%, I wanted to make sure they understood that they could lose everything they got right now if we continue to wait for fi financing, not financing, but grants that we may have in the future without going forward with the process so that we're able to put it out to bid in February or March. And that's going to be, like I said, because the WIA grant, we're not going to know about until June of 23. I can't I can't start the project June 23. You might as well throw the money in, back to CDBG and USDARD because we'll, we would just never have the time to do it. And that's what I want to let you know. Did I answer everything? Right? I answered everything. Yeah. Thanks. I hate to make it a 56 thing, but is there still an opening on the zoning board committee? And what does a citizen have to for do? The zoning board because What's that? You have, no, just joking. What does a citizen, yeah, you've asked you that. What does a citizen have to do specifically besides wait patiently for two years to get the board to vote on whether yeah. they can volunteer or not? Like I don't know what else to do besides yeah. I gave everybody cards. I yeah. emailed did you three did times. Did you get a whole friend orange yet or any of those guys? I, you said that you would contact them. Uh, I emailed you I, I did times. I didn't uh, mention you to Frank Dorrance. Yeah. I, I, I'm not, don't get me wrong. In other words, I'm okay. lost. What do I have to do? Yeah. Specifically, is there an application? Maybe there should be an application to, to, from the town? To my what? knowledge, yeah. there's never been an application. There's only been a, a letter of interest or a, a acceptance, you know. Um, it's usually not not a job that people are knocking down the door to get and it's not like uh there's a waiting list of those people because it's not paid and it's a, if you're coming in front of the zoning board there's already an issue <laughs> so it's no fun but um traditionally i what i did is take the advice of the zoning board on who they wanted to tap it is up to this board to approve that nominee so um, how do i get nominated like besides nominating myself, which right. I did officially three times through yeah. emails, like well, I don't what know I, how else to I don't do. want to speak for the yeah. zoning board. Yeah. And I would like, because they have to work with whoever or whomever that person is, that they're on board with that, whoever that name is. Right, but uh, I don't I'll, know any I'll those, reach out. I don't know any of those people. Like, I can provide credentials if right. that's appropriate. But in other words, how would they make a decision if somebody's volunteering that they don't know? Well, I can't no more give them the name. If they want to look you up on Facebook no, or yeah, whatever you want, well, I don't know like, what you're it, asking me is to it, do. I'm asking, is there a process by which I can give you my credentials, my educational background, my professional background? I mean, like, your, your email that you sent me had pretty much all your background.